Hello, it's Aga from Marvis Artists and today I'd love to show you a great lighting trick that can help you in many situations. So when can you use this technique? Let's say you want to have soft light in your image and less contrast between light and shadow. Or maybe you have an object that has harsh shadows on it and it looks weird. Or on the other hand, you feel that your image needs more punch and it needs more contrasty shadows. So what do you think? I guess I should teach you this. This technique I want to show you today is using photography. Professional photographers use special reflectors and anti-reflectors to get the results I told you before. If you don't have these specialistic devices, you can use, for example, white or black cardboard. It gives pretty well results. Now, let me quickly show you what I mean. I have this white piece of paper and I will put this close to my face. Take a look at the shadows. They are much softer than they were before. Now I will show you how it works with black. Can you tell the difference? I am sure you are. Okay, now, when you know how it works in real life, let's jump into 3ds Max. I open one of our scenes. I create a simple plane that will be working the same as the paper I've showed you before. I rotate this by 90 degrees. And maybe I resize one side a bit. Let's move the plane closer to the armchair. I still think it's a bit too big, so let me scale this. And move it down. As you probably already noticed, the object is visible in the camera. But you know how magical the software is and we can make it invisible to the camera. Let's do this then. Go to the object properties and uncheck visible to camera option. Let's start interactive rendering. Before I assign the material, I want to show you something. As the plane is pink in my case, you can clearly see how it affects the image. You can see the pink tin, for example, on the blanket and on the carpet as well. Additionally, you can control how intense the effect is by moving the plane. The further away the plane is, the less intense the effect will become. You can notice, for example on the blanket, that it's not as pink as before. If we go closer, it's getting to be more pinkish. Great, I think it gives us a clear idea how we can affect the image this way. Now let's create the material. Let's assign this to the plane. We can start with the white diffuse color. So basically what we are doing here, we are reflecting the light. You can notice that the blanket is lighter even though we didn't change any properties of the wool material. The shadows are really soft and it becomes less contrasty. In this case, it will be a good idea to duplicate the render so we can easily compare what is different. Ok, now change the diffuse color to black. I think that the difference is pretty clear now. You can see that the blanket is much darker now, but also the shadows are more visible. By the way, let me know in the comments if you like the videos where I show you the tricks like this one. Again, we can move the plane back to see how it looks. Actually, maybe here it will be a good idea to duplicate this render. Now, move the plane closer and let's compare.
Of course, this one appears to be much darker. So basically, you can control the effect by changing the distance between the plane and the objects. Additionally, we can also change the scale of the plane. So in this case, it will work more like the wall. Let's scale the plane quite a bit. I will make it higher as well. I changed the diffuse for some vivid color, so we'll be able to see more clearly how this affects the image. Great! You can notice that we can see a bit of effect on the blanket, slightly on the armchair, curtain, and here on the carpet as well. Because it's far from the object, the effect is quite subtle. But when we move the plane closer, you can see that almost everything is getting reddish. Let's go back to the previous settings and change the diffuse color to black. We can use region rendering to see the results quicker. Duplicate the render and change the color to white. I'm sure you can see the difference. This image becomes lighter in general and less contrasty. You can see the difference in shadows here and here and here. Look at the accessories on top of the coffee tables. Now, let me show you one more thing, which perhaps make this even more clear. Let's do one version with black plane and one with white again. This time, let's decrease the exposure value. You can notice that both images are quite similar now in terms of brightness, but in the one with white plane, the shadows are more subtle. So basically, you can use this technique in many cases, but there is no need to use this in every single image. But sometimes it can be really useful and it can make huge difference. In general, remember that if you go for more contrast, use black color. And if you want more subtle effect, go for tints towards white. As we're big fans of observing things in real life, I'd like to encourage you to test this technique so you can truly understand this. Take your smartphone, piece of white and black paper and take some photos. You can do this with just the natural light and test this with and without the cardboards. I think it can give you a great understanding how the light can be reflected. Plus, don't forget to test this in 3ds Max. That's it. Thanks for watching and also don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video.